Hey, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. This is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer, and welcome to The Weekly Way, your weekly devotional commentary on the Torah, half Torah, and Brit Chadesha portions. Today, we are in Parashah, or Torah portion number 11, which is Vayigash, which is taken from Genesis chapter 44, verse 18, all the way to chapter 47, verse 27. So, today I want to talk about things, objects, possessions, stuff. You know, I mean, anything from homes to cars to TVs to clothes, I mean, you name it, stuff. And these things, this, this stuff that we have, these dead, inanimate objects, is the 21st century form of idolatry. I mean, back then, I mean, you had idols which were covered in, you know, wooden idols which were covered in gold and silver, or you had idols that were carved out of stone or precious stones or or whatnot, you know, and people bowed down and worshipped them and, and, and took care of them and everything. But, you know, so idolatry was a major problem in the Torah, and not much has changed. It's, it's just that, you know, what we idolize is different. You know, we're no longer fooled by the, you know, gilded covered idols and, and statues, and we don't bow down and worship these false gods. But yet, you know, it, idolatry is just the same thing. It's just in a new package. So instead of worshiping idols, we worship our TV. You say, I don't worship my TV. Really? How much time do you spend watching it rather than in the Word of God? I mean, are you sitting in church or synagogue and looking at your watch and thinking, man, I hope the PV, uh, I hope the PVR is recording that game, or man, I want to get home so I could watch this show on Netflix or whatever, you know, so, or you know, like, uh, or or a new car that you have and you spend so much time washing it and waxing it and babying it and getting accessories for it, you know, it just consumes your every thought. You're in, you're at work and you're typing, you're like, oh, I can't wait to get out of work to get in my car. How many times do we say, man, I can't wait to get out of work so I could read my Bible? You know, it's like anything that you put before God, whether it's possessions, inanimate stuff, or even people, or even your job, whatever you put before God in his word has become an idol in your life. So, so often God has something so much better for us, but we won't open our fists, in or, uh, which is full of cookies, in order to free our hand from the cookie jar. We think that this handful of cookies that's stuck in the cookie jar is more important than what God has for us. But God has so much more, and if we would just release our hands so we can get our hand out of the cookie jar, which we've been caught in, God would, would provide us with so much more. Instead of chocolate chip cookies, he's going to give us cake and ice cream. <laughs> you know. So what blessings have we missed out on because of an issue with lust of the flesh or lust of the eyes or the pride of life as as the verses in 1 John uh, 2.16. Are there any things holding you back uh, from the next rung in the ladder or whatever God may have for you or has called you to do or be? You know, look, I'm a Jewish guy born in exile, way far away from the land of my people, and even though I'm a dedicated, Torah-obedient, Messianic slash Netzari Jew, I'm nonetheless been born in the proverbial Egypt and Babylon. And whether or not I like it or not, some of Egypt and Babylon has rubbed off on me just simply because I live here. If you go fishing, you're going to come back smelling like fish. If you hang around a pigsty, you're going to go, you're going to come back smelling like pig pucky. I mean, that's just that, you know, that's just the nature of the beast. And, you know, many of us are blind to it. You know, sometimes people don't put on enough deodorant or, you know, forgot to put on deodorant and they don't realize how bad they smell, you know, but somebody else noticed it. But at least I'm not blind to the fact that I realize that that this proverbial Egypt and Babylon, the exile that I live in, has kind of rubbed off on me in a way. So, you know, good thing that I'm that 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 I'm working to remove this this zaaretz or this leprosy of Egypt and Babylon that's it's attached itself to me. That I'm recognizing it and I'm trying to you know steer and stay away from it. So. You know, the country of my exile, North America, Canada, and the United States, is one of the world's top consumers. It's a land that where whoever dies with the most toys wins. It's a place where bling equals success and power. A land where clothes makes the man and sporty cars uh, can compensate for a lack of inheritance, let's say. This land is a place where hardly anyone uh, lacks the bare necessities, yet the TV uh, tells us 
what we need to be happy. It tells us where we need to go, where, what we need to do, how we need to be in order to be happy. And you know, people has their priorities so messed up. I've seen run down uh, trailers or run down shacks that people call a house and the shingles are falling off, there's holes in the wall, the, the glass is broken or cracked, and yet there's going to be a satellite dish attached to it. The TV, the satellite dish has become more important than actually upkeeping the place where you live. You know, I've seen a house where there's actually insulation busting out of the seams, and I'm thinking, how does people spend the winter in there, and yet there's a satellite dish attached to it? You know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So, the older that I get, the more the more that I realize that materialism and stuff doesn't mean much and the more that I can do without you know because what's on the inside is what matters my inner life my inner personal life my personal relationship with God is that matters and you know and let's say that you're totally uh, you know totally eschewing the the material possessions of the world such as cars and name brand fancy clothes and the latest tech gadgets smartphones and I this and I that and TVs etc and let's say you're just going with the bare necessities could you live without your Bible? Could you live without that cross or star of David necklace? Could you live without the prayer shawl, the talit, or the or the zitzit, or uh, you know your tefillin? Could you live without these physical religious items? You know, I think of uh, of brothers and sisters and believers around the world who are. Um, who have been who have been persecuted by atheists or communist regimes or uh, Muslim extremist regimes, and they're imprisoned. They're stripped of their Bibles. They're stripped of any religious articles or items, and all they have is what's in here and what's in here. All they have is what they've memorized. All they have is their personal relationship with God. You know, they don't have these these religious luxury items that we have. Could you live? The life of a believer, could you walk in the footsteps of Yeshua our Messiah by walking and following the Torah, even if you didn't have a Torah, even if you didn't have a Bible, even if you didn't have a prayer shawl and seat and tefillin and all these things, could you still be a solid believer? Could you live the Torah obedient life? Could you survive without these things? You know, so even religious items, even good things can become idols and we can become too dependent on these things. You know, so uh, one day we may wake up in a world where you know, our religious freedoms are taken away and the things that we take for granted are stripped from us. So let's move on to the half Torah portion in Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 15 through 28. I'm going to just read verse 23. It says, Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of their dwelling places uh, wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their God. So when God unites the two houses of Israel in the end of days, the house of Judah and the house of Israel, the, uh, you know, the, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, when God unites these, uh, which is already in progress as we speak, it's actually happening now. God is revealing who the lost tribes are and, and Israel is becoming one again. So when God unites the two houses of Israel, this modern new form of an old sin we called idolatry will be a thing of the past. Just like Jacob's sons had to leave their possessions behind for bigger and better things in Egypt uh, to escape the famine, maybe we, uh, in the exodus from exile, uh, which is to come, the greater exodus, so to speak, will have to leave behind our iPods and our, our you know, MacBooks and our computers and our smartphones and, you know, and all the latest tech and gadget, gadgetry, our hybrid cars, our RVs and homes and our home theater systems and, and, and our three to four digit pay stubs for the new home in the promised land. All these are just idols, you know. So let's move on to Revelation chapter uh, 22 verses 1 and 2, which is our Brit Chodesha portion for this week. And it says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielding her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. As the old illustration goes, that you never see a U-Haul or a moving truck behind a hearse. And this not only applies to the greater exodus or the final exodus in the future, but it also uh, applies to our greater exodus uh, from this life, going from this life to the afterlife, this life to the next. 
this world to the world to come. Uh, but in the world to come, we're going to be leaving everything behind that we think is so great and fancy and important. And we're going to be leaving this stuff behind only to realize once we get to the new Jerusalem in the world to come that what we left behind was crap, was junk compared to what awaits us in the new world, in the world to come, in the new Jerusalem. So this week, let's really examine ourselves and examine our lives and see if we're putting anything before God, anything before Messiah Yeshua, anything before His Word. Are we making anything an idol? Is there something in our lives that we feel that we can't live without? If we lost our, if we lost our phone, if we lost our wallet, would our whole world come crashing down on us? If our fancy SUV was repoed, or our computer just blew, or our television set, uh, you know, uh, crashed, whatever. Would we survive? Would we be able, would, would it affect us? Would we break down and cry? Would we, would we break down and run in a panic and think, oh, my life's over. What am I going to do? What if the power goes out and the power never comes back on? Will you be able to survive? You know, what if, what if uh, the laws change and, and uh, you know, your belief system has now become illegal and politically incorrect and your Bible and all your religious items are confiscated? Would you still be able to survive? Would you still be able to maintain your faith in God and walk in the footsteps of Yeshua, our Messiah, by walking and following the Torah? Make the inner life the more important thing. Uh, you know, th this is the thing where moth and rust does not corrupt and thieves break in and steal. They may be able to kill the body, but they can't kill the soul. They may be able to take everything away from you, but they can't take what's on the inside of your heart and in your mind. They can't take away your relationship with God. And that's what matters, and that's what counts, and that's what's the most important. So uh, let's, let's really expose in our lives what our points of idolatry are. Let's recognize our idols and let's demote them and put them in their proper place or let's chop them down and burn them all together. Do we really need them? Guys, thanks so much for uh, watching and for listening this week. Have a great week. Shalom and Shavuot Tov. Yo, you've heard of Straight Out of Compton, but have you ever heard of Straight Out of Context? Straight Out of Context is a new video series on the Ray Bash Gatan YouTube channel and it highlights how we take scripture out of context but does it in a very humorous way. Check it out. Uh, word. Peace out. Uh.